Right, so before we get into it, if you like the video, press on that like button. If you want to see more videos of that kind, subscribe. But press on that like button because that really helps me out a ton. And the last time I made a video here was like 470 days ago. I really forgot what it's like. I really miss being here. I miss the feeling. I miss being interrupted by my family members. There's a lot of things that I miss, guys. Uh, uh, yeah, it's been a long time. I had a lot of things that were happening. I feel like it's only yesterday. I really feel so. I feel so. I feel like I'm gonna get out of this room and I'm gonna be something like 19 again or something. <laughs> I'm, I'm 21 now. <laughs> Damn. Anyways, the last video I made at that time was like. I guess uh, an $850 gaming PC. I guess it only makes sense to make this video again or make a gaming PC build guide of the budget again and see how much things have changed. So without wasting any more time, let's get to it. For the TPU, we're looking at the Intel Core i5-10400. In my opinion, right now, this is the best budget CPU you can put your money on. It goes for $130. It's a very good CPU when it comes to gaming. It will not bottleneck our GPU if you decided to play at ultra settings or 1440p, 4K. The only caveat is that it doesn't have the best upgrade path out there. You can go with an i7-10700 or something like that. Other than that, you cannot go with like a 12th gen CPU or something like that. The 11400 isn't that different from it. But $130 is a very good uh, price tag for a CPU of that performance, in my opinion. And it's a 6 core 12 thread CPU. You can actually go stream with it. You can do video editing, you can do rendering. A very good budget CPU, in my opinion. As for the board, I myself would go with the cheapest thing I could find in the market right now. Because, as I said, there isn't that big of an upgrade path. And all the H510M boards, they don't have... PCIe Gen 4, so we're not missing out on anything if you decided to go with a board cheaper than $80 or cheaper than the others, you know what I'm saying? And uh, yeah, it gets the job done, it got two RAM slots, it supports the 11th gen CPUs, and uh, there is no difference between any of the models in my opinion. And the RAM we're looking at 16 gigs to 8 gb by 60 DDR4 RAM at 3200 megahertz. Again, I'd recommend you to cheap out on that because that, yeah it will not matter that much in terms of performance as long as it's 3200 megahertz and 16 gigs is the gold standard for gaming right now so yeah you'll not need to upgrade anytime soon for the next two to three years but yeah you will have to eventually upgrade the ram so but for now 16 gigs is more than enough for gaming also streaming and maybe some light video editing because it can take more than 16 gigs to be honest but for a gaming PC, I guess this is the golden stand. And this is where we kind of cut corners in the SSD department. I'm looking at 512 gigabyte SSD right now. But if you have the money you, or you could get a good deal on other ports, I would really recommend you to go with a one terabyte SSD since 512 gigs isn't the highest space out there or isn't the best space. But if you don't play a lot of games, even though I doubt it, you know, why would you get a really good performing PC in, in terms of like the sheer raw performance, we're not looking at the FPS intensive games, we're looking at the graphical intensive games. This is the PC that is more focused at, a console-like experience. Why would you get a 512GB SSD with that? So yeah, I'd recommend you to go with a 1TB SSD if your budget allows you to do so. And the GPU, the Juice, we're looking at one of the best price performance gaming GPUs out there, the AMD RX 6600. Now let me tell you, the GPU that was on the previous PC, the old one with the GDX 1660 Super, this GPU is like 50 to 60% better in terms of performance than the 1660 Super. This is an AMD GPU, goes for 450 bucks on a good deal. You can even get it a few in a places like Micro Center or something for 420 or something like that. It's a very good price performance GPU. It's in terms of performance equivalent to an RTX 3060 from NVIDIA. The NVIDIA GPU goes for $600 to $650. So we're looking at like near $200 difference for the same performance. That's why I really like this GPU when you compare it to the old GPUs before the mining craziness, before the scalping, before all that, you'd find it equivalent to an RTX 2060 Super or an RTX 2070 Super even. So these GPUs at the time were for around 350, 400 ish to 500 bucks. The thing is that you're actually getting a GPU 
for the same price and performance of the GPUs before like two years ago. That might sound not so good, but given the way the market is, that's actually excellent, you know? And you can play games at 240 frames per second. It doesn't mean that, you know, because this PC isn't made for the FPS intensive games, that it doesn't play it. You can play Fortnite, you can play CSGO, you can play Valorant at near 240 FPS. But if you want to get that locked experience, you'd have to play on stretch res. So if you're a pro gamer, I guess this is not a big deal for you to play on stretch res. It's actually better. But yeah, I really love the GPU for the performance it provides. As for the power supply, we're looking at EVGA 500W A plus bronze. 500 watts is more than enough. This PC is pretty power efficient and EVGA is a pretty trusted brand. So you, we don't have any problems here. You can upgrade to a higher end GPU in the future. No problem with that also, but I wouldn't recommend it to be honest. And the case, this is where we kind of cut corners. I'd recommend it to go with something like a Roswell FBMX1. Anything that goes for under $40 in my opinion. Uh, yeah, a very good budget case will not hurt you, uh, the performance will not be damaged, uh, the temperatures will be fine, this PC is pretty power efficient and not that power hungry for it to be so hot. You know what I'm saying? So hey, that's been it guys. If you like that video, press on the like button. If you wanna see more visit that kind, subscribe. Feels great to be back, but hey, I'm not so comfortable to be honest, but that's how it used to be, <laughs> really. So hey, I'll see you in the next one and peace.